In this episode of The Trend Talk, actress Julie Carmen talks about her role in the film Windows of the World. Health advocate and actress Lourdes Reynolds shares her journey to wellness after being diagnosed with cancer. And Sharon Marquez talks about her entrepreneurial spirit and her Total Balance Wellness Spa. All that and more on The Trend Talk. Welcome to the Trend Talk. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous day. <laughs> yes, and Naiba, I wanted to say today let's just be positive, okay? Yes, because words are so powerful. I mean, it's like a little seed that can go into your brain and affect your entire day, sometimes your entire week, yeah. especially in media. So let's, let's just put positive messages out there. You know, there is a lot of negativity in media, and there's there, it's not good for the kids. Right. You know, kids need positive images. They need positivity so that they can, you know, uh, grow up to, to have that aspiration to do positive things as well. Mm -hmm. And there's not enough books right. for children about positive images, and that's why I wanted to congratulate you on your new book. You are a published Thank author. You. Be bold, be brave. Se audace valiente, 11 Latinas who made U.S. history because I do feel that Latinas and Latino kids do yeah. need more books out there so they can see themselves reflected um, in books. We have Selena, Selena. of course, Elena Ochoa, an astronaut. And basically this wow. book is, is meant for little kids to see that anything is possible. Look at Sonia Sotomayor. Um, Maria Hinojosa, but one of our favorites. Dolores Huerta. Dolores Huerta. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, there's the, a lot of bold women in our Latino community, and all of those bold women should have a platform, right? Definitely. And talking about bold women, mm -hmm. there is one badass bold woman, woman uh, Kate Del Castillo, that you recently interviewed. That's right. She is bold, and her character in La Reina del Sur is bold, so it came back. And I recently interviewed her about her character in that series because this time around she plays a mom. So let's check out the interview. Congratulations because this show is definitely trending, Kate. And that's why it had to come back to for season two, right? Right. Talk to us a little bit about uh, what happens in season two. Well, season two is, uh, it's like, the, it's the same Teresa. I'm, uh, mm -hmm. You know, we keep the essence of Teresa. She's, you know, Mexican, she's uh, bad spoken, she is, curses all the time, she's a drunk. <laughs> she was a trafficker, now she's gonna have to go again back to the business, but still is the same, you know, loving woman that cares for everybody else. And now she's caring for her daughter. She's a more much mature woman mm -hmm. because she has a daughter, but also she's gonna be blinded the moment they kidnap her her kid right and then so her maternal instincts kick in obviously, uh, obviously. right I mean she she was already maternal with because she's a protector she right. she was always like that with her friends so now imagine uh, she's gonna go all the way for her daughter so you definitely are a character that's bold and brave and that's why I wanted to bring this book to give you a children's book called be bold Bre be brave sauda se oh valiente. My God. 11 Latinas que hicieron historia en los Estados Unidos con Ay, qué lindo. Selena, con oh eh, Sonia Sotomayor. Es para, I think you're one of these women that are, Thank and I wrote you. this, and it's coming out in a week, so I wanted to give you a copy. Thank you so it much. It doesn't even come this out yet. This means a lot. <laughs> I, I, I love it, and uh, I am so into encouraging uh, little girls, everything that we can do to help little kids, especially little women. It's amazing, so congratulations on this. Especially Latinas. Especially Latinas, we right? have it even worse. No nada más por ser mujeres, sino somos mujeres y Latinas, so <laughs> please <laughs> help us. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a tough life. Wow, she really liked your book. And you know what? I wish I had had that book when I was growing up. So, you know, we have to keep that going, that momentum going, right? We can't just end it with one project or one book. Right. And going back to Kate del Castillo, you know that this is wouldn't be considered a positive character, though. 
but you know she plays it like very uh, tiered right. so that it, she's got a lot of levels and also they asked her you know that question keeps coming back to her about her Chapo experience right. and going to see El Chapo and all and she was saying she was on Jimmy Kimmel and she was he asked her about that and he goes this was eight years between the first episode of El Re La Reina del Sur to now it's eight years later in that this episode right but she she just said you know I'm done with that yeah. I'm done with the chapel. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do the film because that's just wasn't good vibes for her and what happened with the cartel. That's right. But it's so hard for her to, to shake that off because it was kind of a moment in contemporary history, right? Yes. I mean, the most wanted guy in, in narco history was was arrested thanks to her help you know in a in a weird wave so so okay but did what did we say when we first started we're gonna keep this positive, positive. let's just do positive so so we are so excited because we have a very very positive guest coming up yes. she is an actress she's a psychotherapist she's an amazing woman julie carmen is coming up next so don't go away we'll be right back <music> Welcome back. Our next guest first got Hollywood's attention when she was one of the stars in John Cassavetti's Gloria. She also starred in Robert Redford's Milagro Bean Field War and John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness. We want to welcome our friend, Julie Carmen. Welcome thank you. to the Trend Talk. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Well, thank and, you for yeah. being here. And we are so excited about one of your recent projects, Windows of the World, which is so important because it's about Latinos that were in the Twin Towers during 9-11. Um, Edward James Olmos is in it, Ryan Guzman, and it's also directed by Eddie's son, mm -hmm. right? So talk to us about what, what role you play and the importance of this film. It won the Humanitarian Film Award um, at the Sedona Film Festival, which uh, is because it's such an important subject. Immigration globally is an issue that people are pondering. Mm -hmm. I think because of the lack of resources and how we've destroyed resources, mm -hmm. people are becoming more greedy and uh, more divisive and feeling like, I want mine, therefore you can't have any. So there's that kind of split. Um, the film basically starts in Mazatlan, Sinaloa, which is where we shot. And I play Edward James Olmos's wife. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of sons, and Ryan Guzman is one of them, and David De Santos. And uh, the shrimp industry there is seasonal. Mm -hmm. So Eddie goes to New York to make money as a busboy in the restaurant windows on the world so that is the name yes, yes. and so and what what was what happened there he sends money home and then all of a sudden on our little tv with a hanger for an antenna we see the trade tower you know the world trade center come mm -hmm. down and it's as any family in any little village in any little hut around the world watched that on tv and i go into a catatonic depression i just stop eating I don't change I don't wash my hair I don't so eat he, uh, what happened so what happens with with how do you get to him so if, then my son gets worried I'm gonna die and decides to walk across the desert and he finds Richard Cabral and the two of them talk about in very exquisite writing um, they talk about the state of the world and the state of coming to America walking through the desert so Richard Cabral is famous as a hip-hop poet and actor yes, and also, yes. I'm, I'm and MC, you know. And also the important part or piece of this movie is about immig immigrants, how we live in the shadows, how we're not recognized because a lot of immigrants did die yeah. during 9-11, but they don't have a memorial when you go visit New York. We don't right. see their names. We can't put a flower like the rest. And that's really sad. And, and that's kind of a commentary of the state of of immigrants who, who are still kind of invisible in society, right? It shocked me, and I learned it from the film. When Ryan Guzman gets to the assistance center at the, for the trade cent, the World Trade Center uh, survivors, uh, they say, was your father undocumented? And Ryan says, yes. And then they said, then he didn't exist. 
Whoa, um, they actually said then that? there's no record of him. Wow. Did, look in the morgue. So he goes oh to the morgue. Gosh. And I won't give away what happens because you've got to see the film. But it's also been winning a lot of uh, awards as it went through the festival circuit and won awards. It only did two festivals so far. And in L.A. it did the Method Festival and won Best Screenplay, which it deserves. Robert Mailer Anderson created the film, wrote it, produced it, financed it. And it's his labor of love. So it, mm. it won Best Screenplay, Best Director for Michael J Michael Olmos, and Best Supporting Actor for Eddie Olmos. It's an wow. extraordinary. We got to see plays. this film. It's yeah. such an important film. film. And you yeah. you have a great cast. Yeah. But tell us about when you're not acting, you are a psychotherapist and a yoga therapist. Tell me, tell us what. What led you to do that what, when you had such a great career? I've always done it. I've always taught and I've always wanted to be a psychoanalyst. Mm -hmm. I'm a listener and I come from a family uh, who are doctors and teachers and more in, uh, not in show business. So uh, when I was kind of at the height of my career and I had two children, I was trying to juggle it all. But then with the Runaway Productions, I was on the road for six, seven, eight months out of the year in Australia and Madrid and Toronto and Arizona and Mexico, everywhere, dragging babies around and um, ended up going back to school, got my master's in clinical psych, uh, went to yoga and then became a yoga teacher. Which one do you like, love the best? All three. I can't retire because I can't retire from any three because they're all intrinsic to my nature. And you also, your title is Marriage and Family Therapist in Private Practice, and you're the Director of Mental Health at Loyola Marymount University Yoga Therapy RX, where you train yoga therapy interns to work with behavioral health patients. So talk to us. You're a heavy what duty. It, you're heavy <laughs> duty. What, it, what, is, what is it about yoga um, that really connects with, you know, with mental health? Well, that's, a whole show into itself. <laughs> would you? We would love for it, you to come back and tell yeah, us all about that. And we'll that. focus on that. And we'll focus on that. Right. But right now, um, you have this movie going, and you have another movie with Peter Fonda, which is called, uh, what is it? Um, you Can't Say You Can't no. Say No. Yeah, it's a romantic comedy, and I so played if every, Peter Fonda's love interest, which was really fun. We giggled the whole time. So if somebody wants to see all of that and check into your psychotherapist's work, where can we find you? Well, the windows on the, I'm sorry, You Can't Say No has a two-year window coming up on Showtime. It, but before that, it'll be on iTunes, Hulu, Amazon. So but how can people get in touch with you? Uh, What's Julie your social Carmen 3, that's okay. the best way. One incredible woman that's doing oh, filmmaking. And you look beautiful, by the way. Yoga, thank you. helping <laughs> others, and bringing light wherever you are. So thank you so much, Julie Carmen, for being our guest today. Thank you. And I want to read your book. Yay! <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. All right. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Belle Hernandez. And I'm Naiva Reynoso. And, and we, we go, go together, together like, like café con leche. Don't forget to watch us on the Trend Talk. Because you know, if it's trending, we're, we're talking. talking. We have a show chock full of positive, empowering women. And our next guest is an actress, but right when she was in the prime of her career, she got a diagnosis that almost stopped everything, a diagnosis of Hodgkin's lymphoma. But she decided to go an alternative route. She created a documentary and now a book to document her journey. And we welcome Lourdes Colon here so she can talk to us all about it. Welcome. <laughs> Thank good you. to see you, Lourdes. You too. It's always good to see you. So you. I want to ask you, how did you handle everything? I mean, you were you had to deal with CBS, a development yeah. deal. You were on Without a Trace, and then now all of a sudden you get this diagnosis, and doctors didn't really give you a lot of hope. How did you handle both of these worlds colliding at the same time? Mm -hmm. um, I had to like put them in compartments, you know, where I just had to still focus on the joy that I was getting from filming because I love being on camera and performing and entertaining. Um, but then I had to focus on what I needed to do to get myself back to balance because something happened that got me there. And then I just started researching and I had to figure out what it was going to take to turn these two worlds around into one. Were you able to work? I did, you know, it's interesting. I did continue to work, um, but it got to a point where I had to stop. Mm. <laughs> mm. And um, 
when you got the diagnosis, um, you did something and you, you coined the term create option C. Yes. Tell us what that means. Well, to create option C, you have to know what option A and option B is. And option A is what most people do. And if you think of a pyramid, most people are here at the bottom. And everything has to do with doing exactly what the medical system tells you to do. So if the doctor says you're going to do this, this, and that, and then you just do it, you follow it, you don't research, you don't see if it's going to harm, you just do nothing. You just follow. Mm -hmm. B is actually what many people I met uh, had done, including my dad, and that's do nothing at all. You just leave it in, in God's hands and continue to keep living how you're going to live, and the day is going to come when it comes. Mm -hmm. And then C is where you start researching, you start educating yourself and start finding out what works with your body. What is it that got off balance? Why did you get cancer? How is there other people that have done things that worked for them? And it's just researching and getting all this information. And I found out so much information out there and found that so many people have been cancer naturally. Wow. And so you just said, I'm gonna start researching on Google? You Googled it or how yeah. did you start? Well, I, I went on the internet, yes. And I started researching and I just looked up how to fight cancer naturally. And then like a plethora of links showed up. And not just links on other people that have done it, but then there's books. And there was one book after another book after another and book. And that's what you decided to do, to do it alternatively. Yes. What is it, homeopathically, would you call that, or alternative? It's a, it's a combination of a lot of things. I mean, it's diet, it's, it's you know, it's nourish, balance, and cleanse both mind, body, and spirit. So it's the whole mm. package. And now you obviously documented that in yes. a film yeah. and also in your book so yes. other people that may be going through the same thing can learn from everything yes. that you did because you're 100% healthy now, correct? Oh my gosh, yes. Cancer free? <laughs> yeah, cancer free and healthier now than I've ever been in my wow. life. I, I yeah. saw the documentary. I yeah. was blown away because it actually shows her like withering away. She was yeah. almost at her deathbed with pneumonia. We also caught pneumonia. Yeah. So um, that is amazing. So show us your book yes. because this is it. Huh? <laughs> and I love the yes. title, Our Journey to option yes. C. Why our journey? What does that mean? Well, our journey to option C is because it was it was a journey that my husband had to get on board with. Because he was the filmmaker that filmed everything. Yes. And it had I had to enroll him to understand and believe that what I was doing was right. Mm -hmm. And so it was a matter of just making it into a, as a team. And it took a bit, but then when he started doing his own research and stuff, and we started doing it together, it became our you know, journey. also yeah. because a lot of people, your par your family was saying, don't do it. you got to go through the treatment. <laughs> yes. But let me talk about family. You also have a daughter. Yes. Okay, you went through this whole ordeal, and you yeah. came out at the end healthy, yes. and you keep up with this diet. But your daughter had an accident, Yes. and she was basically brain dead. Right. And you had to wow. fly back to Chicago, it yes. is. Tell us what happened, how your daughter came back after the doctor said, mm-mm. Yeah, I went, well, they told me that they were going to keep her alive till I got there because they had her alive on machines. And the doctor, what he described was is that all her white matter was gone. Mm -hmm. And that um, even if she, out of a miracle, woke up, she'd be a vegetable and eventually die anyway because her, her organs were shut down. And so I immediately started looking up what builds the brain. And because I got through my journey that everything has something that helps them. So I started looking and I, I found omega-3 fatty acids. It's what our brains are built from when we're in our mother's womb. And I'm like, that's what she needs. She needs a saturation of that. And then I started finding that others had done the same thing yeah. for the same incidents. So I spoke with the head doctor and you know, after a battle and a couple arguments with a few of them, um, and I'm like, I'm not turning off the machines. She needs 20 grams of fish oil in her f wow. feeding tube. And after we spoke and argued a little bit, they went ahead and did it, and within eight days, she woke up. Whoa. That's amazing. Yeah. And before we, we sign off, how is your daughter doing now? Oh, she's 100% great. She lives in Wisconsin. She has a cat, and she dates. Oh, well, wow. this is amazing because with knowledge, you were able to do all of this. So right. congratulations. Thank You're you. an inspiring woman. Yes, you that are. You, took, you had the courage because a lot of people, they tell them, what are you doing? That's not good. Right. So, you have to be your own yeah. health advocate, and you that's do. what you do. Yes. And if someone's going through the same journey, where, they, where can they find the documentary and the book? Um, the book, you can get it on Amazon Prime. And you can, you, know, you can get the book, or you can go online. And if you've got Kindle, 
um, unlimited or library, oh. you can watch, you can read it for free. Mm -hmm. um, and the documentary should be on the next three months. Okay, great. Well, thank yeah, you thank so you. much, thank you so Lois. Much. Thank you. So wonderful to see you. It's so nice and healthy. Yes, thank you. yes, yes. <laughs> Healthier than than most people. <laughs> so, good job, good thank job you. there. So we will be right back with a lot more here on the Trend Talk. Don't go away. Hi, welcome back. Today, the show has been about positivity and wellness. And we're going to add to that because with us today, we have Sharon Marcus. She is a wife, a mother, and an entrepreneur. She owns her spa, Breathe Total Balance. And she's going to tell us all about that and all the services. Welcome, Sharon, to the Trend Talk. Hi, Val. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Tell me, why did you decide? You're a mother, you have your kids at home. Why did you decide to go into the spa business? You know, most people like, you know, think of other things, but the spa business is very, very specific. Why did you decide that? Um, well, it's a very, it definitely is a very competitive um, area of business. Um, however, I did a change of career. I was in banking for 12 years. And at that time, um, I became a single mother, mm -hmm. and I was going through a divorce. I had two small children, and um, I knew that failure wasn't an option at that time. So I went back to school, and um, massage therapy kind of just fell on my lap. And I went back to school. Um, at that time, my daughter was only three months old. Mm -hmm. My son was three years old. So um, it took a lot of my time, but the sacrifice was so much more worth it because um, I learned the business as I was massaging. I built my clientele, and about three and a half later, three and a half years ago, I was actually able to open my own um, center. And you already had so, your clientele built. Yeah, so that's why um, I was fortunate enough to, I was moving from one office to another office, making other people money, and I was like, I had more of a huge following that I was able to take a leap of faith and just open my own. And where place. is your spa located? It's actually in Bellflower, mm -hmm. um, which is near Long Beach, Lakewood area. It's 10 minutes from my house, so it gives me the flexibility to attend to my children as needed. Um, I'm still very hands-on on my business. Who, uh, what kind of services do you offer? So we offer massage therapy, acupuncture, um, chiropractic care, and then we just incorporated body contouring and facials and cupping, which is one of my favorites. What is cupping? So cupping. Is that drinking tea? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they actually do look like teacups. Uh -huh. um, so cupping is a old holistic healing um, that the Chinese made. Oh. So um, I like it because it's a quick fix for me because it's not the whole hour that us moms are used to or mm -hmm. even um, have time for. So it's just basically the cups are put on your pelvis areas and it releases the toxins, increases circulation, any stagnant blood that's not circulating properly that can um, incur diseases and illness. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of just releases that and just relaxes you. And the whole service is like 15 to 20 minutes. Really? Mm -hmm. We're pretty much involved in the community. Mm -hmm. So we do do a lot of events in, um, in our geographical area. And we're actually going to be at Latina Fest this Yay! year. So we're super excited about that. We have met so many empowered women, so many women that take that leap of faith. You know, because there's a lot of people that say, oh, I, I wish I could open a spa or I wish I could start my business. But when you actually do it, that is empowering. Did you feel like at first that you, how am I going to do this? And then you just felt like you were in stride and going for it? You know what? I never changed my mindset. Like right now, I still feel like an employee. Um, I never look at myself because to me, you're only good as your team. So mm -hmm. um, I don't think of myself like as a business owner and this entrepreneur. Um, I just go in every day and just apply myself. It was it a big learning curve to have going to business? And yes, you know the spa business, you know your, your work. But then there's also the, oh, the yeah. financial <laughs> aspect, the marketing aspect. How hard was that? That was very hard. Mm -hmm. It was very um, eye-opener. Um, but I was given so many resources and I wasn't afraid to ask questions. So 
you know, and that's what I did. I because everybody started where I started, so mm -hmm. I just went to my resources and was like, look, how do I do this? How do I do that? So I learned to delegate a lot of things that mm. I didn't know. I focused on what I was good at, and delegated what they were good at. Where can we find you to go to all these services um, on social media? Where can we find you? So we're on Instagram, so it's breathe total underscore balance, and mm -hmm. then we are on Facebook with breathe, under breathe total balance. Oh, mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. I have to go in and check out some of the yes, services. Absolutely. It sounds amazing. Thank you. And we're so uh, excited that you're going to join us on Latina Fest. Yes, we're super excited. It's so it's so empowering. I don't know if you went to the last last one, but it's just women being supportive oh, of know. women. I know. Yeah. It's all about networking and just encouraging and lifting each other up. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining us. It was thank wonderful to learn me. more about your business. Yes. I wish you all the luck, and I'm going to go check it out. Thank you. And so that was the beauty and the wellness that we added to close our show. But we don't go away. We'll be right back with a little bit more. You don't want to miss it. And before we say goodbye, we have our Trendejo Trendísimo segment. You know, I love that segment because when we get the celebrities involved, it's always fun. And this time around, I asked them a very interesting question, and I want to ask you the question. Okay, go for Would it. Would you ever let your significant other mm -hmm. scroll through your phone for 24 hours? Yeah. Why? Why? What's wrong you with you? You have it? nothing to hide? Nope. Not even credit card charges? Yeah, you're right. He should never <laughs> touch my phone, ever. <laughs> well, we asked that question to the cast and the director of the movie Perfectos Desconocidos, and this is what they had to say. Going to the game, okay. would you guys, trendejo means no, trendejo, trendesimo means yes, would you guys let your significant others have your cell phone for the entire day? <laughs> so no, oh my gosh, okay, that's so funny. And then, um, what do you guys do? You think over? What do you guys think about oversharing? Do you think that people should ask for advice on social media, um, on such a, an open platform? No. <laughs> okay, so you guys are all all think alike. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being part of the show and for and for partaking and for partaking in this game. It was an honor to be here. That was they hilarious. Were so much fun. <laughs> and that's it for us. Remember to follow us on social media at The Trend Talk Show. Because if, if it's, it's trending, trending, we're talking. talking.